when the Holy Ghost begins to shape your life, mold your thoughts through these expressions that He takes us through, the shouting, the joy, the praise, the dance, speaking in other tongues as the Spirit of God giving utterance, these are acts of the Spirit of God in our life. He is acting out in our lives, shaping us in our problems. Praise the Lord. That these things that challenge you in life are designed to perfect your faith. So as you're going through things in life, the little bit of faith that you have is, a, is going to be perfected when the Holy Ghost is involved. Because the Holy Ghost is going to shape you in your problems. Praise the Lord. He's going to shape you. So that those challenges and those problems that you're going through, you no longer exist. When you exist, you know how you do when you go through your stuff. Right? And God doesn't want you to exist anymore. He is looking for a church without spot. And without wrinkle. He's using the iron right now. And the starch. To straighten you up. Don't you know when you're chasing of the Lord. And you're being chastised by God. Is because he loves you. Yes. Huh? Don't you know when you're going through. He loves you. Don't you know when, when, when things aren't going right. He loves you. And he wants you to get it right. So you don't exist anymore. So the things that you're challenged with are designed to perfect your faith in God. But if you do not yield to the work and the Spirit of God, then you're going to be found with your own righteousness and not the righteousness of God. You'll be found with dead works. And the Bible says that every man's work is going to be tested. Of what sort it is. Rather it is of God. Hmm? Or rather it is of man. Everything that you do. Is going to be tested here. Before you arrive. Jesus said you will know them by their what? By their fruit. By the fruit that they produce. Don't look at them. Look at Christ. Stop looking at people and comparing them and saying, well, this one's more holier than that person, so this one got to be right. No, everybody is wrong. Christ is right. I would behold thy face in righteousness. Whose righteousness? Not my righteousness, but his righteousness. That's how you're going to see God. That's how you're going to see God. That's how you're going to see him through his righteousness in you. And when you wake up, Huh? When the rapture takes place, you're going to have his likeness. You've got to hide in God with Christ. Not try to hide in God without Christ. <laughs> but you've got to go with Jesus. He is the door. You can't come no other way. You've got to go through Jesus Christ. And he said, if you abide in me, you remember that? And I in you. Remember that? You let my word. You let my word. You let the Holy Spirit, my word, abide in you. And you will bring forth much fruit. Hebrews 5, 8 through 9. It says, Although Jesus was the Son of God, yet he learned obedience by the things which he did what? Suffer. He suffered. Although he was the Son of God, he learned obedience through suffering. Hmm? He learned obedience through suffering because he yielded to, to the Father. He yielded to God and allowed God to move him. He said, the works that I do is not I, but my Father doeth them. What I see Him do, I do. What you see me do, you do. Huh? That's 
what we're supposed to do. We keep looking at each other. Don't look at me. I can't save you. Don't look at the other person. They can't save you. Don't look at so-and-so who's laboring on his knees and think that that's the way to go. Christ is the way to go. They may be just down. They're not saying anything. Don't think because somebody fasts for 30 days and they got real skinny that that's the way to go. Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I can't save you. My words can't save you. Only Christ can save. Though he was the Son of God, he learned obedience through the things which he suffered. And being made perfect, he became what? The author of eternal salvation. He learned obedience through the things which he suffered. And through that perfection. He became the author and the finisher of our faith. Huh? He is the author and the finisher of our faith. He will usher us to the things of God. He will take us through our problems and show us how to be perfected in them. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy coming in the morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's no problem too great for him because I yield my life over to him. And I understand what it means when it says I can do all things through Christ Jesus which strengthened me. I understand that now. I understand how important it is to pray in the Holy Ghost. I understand that now. I understand. Because I've yielded over to Him and He has shown me the way. Your works must be found perfect before God in order for you to be called the righteousness of God. Your works must be found perfect before God. Perfect before God. Your works. But you can't do it. You hear me? You cannot do it. There is no man on this planet earth that can make his works perfect before God. There is no man, no preacher. I don't care if he can prophesy. I don't care if he can lay hands on the sick and the sick recover. I don't care what he does. I don't care what she does. I don't care what they do. Their works cannot be made perfect before God without the Holy Ghost doing the work. He is the refiner. He is the perfecter of our faith. He is the righteousness of God in us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He is the only one that can do that. Hallelujah. And not us. We can read this Bible and not understand the word in it unless the Holy Ghost guide us. Unless the Holy Ghost teach us. We can labor on our knees unless the Holy Ghost pay us a visit. We will not know the way. We will not know the truth. We will not understand the way to go. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So our works must be found perfect before God in order for us, before any of us are ever called the righteousness of God. Before any of us. We cannot call ourselves the righteousness of God. I don't care what you say. I don't care what comes out of your mouth. I don't care if you can preach until the folks dance on the pews and start jumping up in the sky and swinging on chandeliers. Unless God call you out as His righteousness, you have not made it. You are still doing dead works. 